Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, well, very nice to, to see you all here today. I uh, know it's very cold, and uh, so you probably want to uh, move, move along to somewhere else. It's getting late in the day. Uh, my name is Marcus Anthony, and I'm an associate professor of future studies at the College of Oil Talent, which used to be called Sino US College. Do you know where that is? No? Jung Mai Da Shui. It's just down, just down the road here, okay? Um, so today I'm going to, it's, it's, on, it's in Bailey Court, right? So actually it's the same campus. So, um, so today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, the uh, Bay, the Greater Bay Area Initiative and also from a futurist perspective because uh, I am actually a futurist, a practicing futurist. And maybe some of you might be interested in that area also. Okay, so um, now I'm going to press a button here, I guess, to go to the next one. Is that right? Let's try this button. Oh, look at that. So this is just a little map of the Greater Bay Area. Now I believe that all of you uh, are studying the Greater Bay Area or have an assignment on it. Is that right? Yes or no? Yes? So I think you probably already will know quite a bit about it. So um, this is just to give you a sense of the area. It includes, of course, Hong Kong, Zhuhai, Macau, uh, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and so on. But you already know that. So here's an overview of my talk. I'm going to talk about a debate that I went to in Hong Kong two weeks ago. And the, the debate was about this initiative. And I'm going to answer the question, what is a futurist? And uh, what does all this mean? So this is a personal perspective. This is what, what I think. And you should be thinking, what do you think? What does it mean for you? Because you're the young people that will uh, be around, uh, probably in this area for a long time. And so you will be the future. I will be the future, but just for a shorter amount of time. Okay. So, next one. Okay, I'm going to tell you a little story. Okay, do you like stories? Okay, in this story, this story begins in the year 1980, and uh, before you were born. And there was a man named, uh, uh, we'll call him Mr. Leo, and he lived in Shenzhen in 1980. And in Shenzhen, he um, had a job, but he just worked in a, in a restaurant. So he didn't earn much money. He had a wife and a child, and he was relatively young, okay, about 30. And he wanted to earn some more money. So what, what do you think he did? He needed more money. To, he wanted to have a better life for him and his family and his little boy. What do you think his plan was? He had no college education, not many skills, just working as a cook in a restaurant. Well, he came up with a plan. He had a very really cunning plan. His plan was to move to Hong Kong. Yes, that was his plan. But this is 1980, remember. This is just after Deng Xiaoping had started to open up China with his poor modernization plan. Um, between 1950 and about that time, the population of uh, Hong Kong had increased about five times from 700,000 people um, up to about 6 million. So the, the Hong Kong government wasn't very keen to have a lot of people move there. So what? So basically, he wasn't qualified to go to Hong Kong. He wanted to work there to earn more money because the wages were high. So what do you think his plan was? How do you think he was going to get to Hong Kong? Hmm? Swim. Any guess? Swim, yes. Exactly right. Now, but why would anybody want to move from this beautiful place called Shenzhen to Hong Kong. Why? Well, this is what Shenzhen looks like today, okay? On the left-hand side, you have basically Shenzhen uh, proper, and on the other side, I believe that's probably Shirko, um, if you've ever been to Shenzhen. Beautiful place, right? Nice place. But in 1980, it didn't look like that. It looked more like this, more like a village, because remember, uh, Deng Xiaoping uh, went to, to 
Shenzhen. What year? What year was it when he opened it up? Hmm? Do you know? 1978. Yes, that's right. So this is kind of what it looked like. It's just a village. So you can imagine people didn't earn much money. So he came up with this plan to swim across Shenzhen Bay to get to Hong Kong. Now, uh, so basically, some people did this in those days. And what they used to do, the men who went across, they used to swim, they practiced swimming, not in the swimming pool, because they didn't have one. They practiced swimming in the reservoir. That's where the city keeps all the water. So the men would go down there and swim, swim, swim. And the government, the government didn't like that, so they poured oil all on the water so the, so the men wouldn't uh, uh, practice swimming to swim across to Hong Kong. But anyway, uh, somehow uh, Mr. Leo decided he would go across. He practiced, and one night, in the middle of the night, he left his wife and said goodbye, and his child. And he got down to the uh, edge of the bay, and he swam all the way across to Hong Kong. It took him eight hours to swim. Okay. And he got there at night time. On the other side of the beach, the police or the government were, were waiting with spotlights to catch anybody that was coming across. But he managed to escape. And he got over the hill and he went to the, the nearest village and he had a coin in his pocket, one coin. He put it in the phone box and he rang an uncle of his that worked in a factory in Hong Kong. And the uncle came and picked him up. And then he spent the next 15 years, 15 years working in a, in a factory in Hong Kong up till about 1985, uh, 95. And then, well, he'd send money back to his wife every weekend. And then um, he went back to Shenzhen. And when he went back to Shenzhen, he was surprised. It didn't look like this anymore. Um, well, like the previous picture, right? Uh, closer, not quite this, but getting towards this. So that tells you something very interesting. How times change and how the future unfolds. And things can change a lot. Nowadays, if you try to escape from Shenzhen, um, maybe people are trying to escape from Hong Kong to get to Shenzhen to get earn more money, right? Or have more opportunity. Uh, they used to tell people, so if you jump into the water, you swim towards the bright lights. That's how you get to Hong Kong. And someone made the joke that if you did that today, you would probably end up landing in Shirkol, because that's where all the bright lights are today. Okay. Now, here's another story. This story is about Anthony, which is me, and my escape to Hong Kong, which was two weeks ago. But I was lucky. I went by a boat. It took me one hour to get there. Because I heard about a debate in Hong Kong, and uh, the debate was about this topic. I found it in the, uh, the newspaper online, and uh, these very fine looking gentlemen were talking about uh, whether the great, uh, the, uh, will the Greater Bay Initiative benefit Hong Kong or not? Okay. And uh, because this is in Hong Kong, it's all about Hong Kong's perspective. And uh, so, President Joseph Chan, Dennis Ma, Professor Whitman Hung, Albert Ng, uh, Yun Den Latu, Tony Chung. You probably don't know who these men are, but they're fairly well respected businessmen and leaders in Hong Kong. Some of them work also in the mainland of China. Okay, so we're just going to pass that one. So, as I landed, this is what I. I uh, found when I got there. It's in the. It was in the uh, J. W. Marin Hotel. I sat at the back on table 15, and up the front, the speakers were here, and uh, you can't see there, but uh, the gentleman was sitting in uh, in the chairs up the front. Okay. The main question was, will this benefit Hong Kong? So. Uh, before we got there, they surveyed the general public, okay, and they surveyed uh, the audience in the hotel, okay, the people like me who went there, and this is what they found out, the answer to the question was. Will it benefit Hong Kong? 90%, 90%, you can't see very well, because it's not very clear. This is a photo I took on the screen, 
90% said yes, it will benefit Hong Kong, and only 3% said no, and 7% said, mm, I don't know. That's really good, right? But wait, that was the people in the audience who are mainly business people and people that are uh, very interested in the Greater Bay Initiative. What about the people of Hong Kong? What do they think? Well, the result of that survey, which the South China Morning Post did, was a little bit different. They found out only 34% said yes, 66% said no. That's a big difference between that and the other one. So what it shows is that the general public of Hong Kong uh, are more skeptical or doubtful about whether it will help them. Why would that be the case, do you think? Okay, so, so I listened to this debate, it was for one and a half hours, and just to help you out, rather than telling you everything, I kind of summarized the main ideas that they came up with when these uh, gentlemen were talking about it. Okay? Uh, I can give you the PowerPoint later on, so you can read this if you want, but I'm not going to go through all of it, because it will take long, too long. But these are the main ideas that came out of the debate. So the first thing is they were very optimistic about the future of the Greater Bay Initiative. They all felt that there's a lot of opportunity in this. Um, and the areas that could benefit, they said, were medicine, property, real estate, banking, manufacturing, talent, that means finding people to hire, land and housing, of course, um, IT, technology, um, high te including high-tech robotics, logistics, which means moving things around, Okay? and environmental protection. So they all felt there was opportunities in those areas. They also felt that Hong Kong had some advantages to give everybody else. Low taxes. Okay? Uh, in Hong Kong they have much lower taxes than the mainland. The food quality is better. You won't die if you eat food there. That's what they think anyway. And uh, safety, uh, health, uh, hospitals are better they think. Um, Investment is safer, so if you invest money as a business, they think it's safer. And um, the other thing is they felt that Hong Kong could be a communicator between China, mainland China, and America and other places. Because China is more west, uh, sorry, Hong Kong is a little more westernized than other parts of China. So they thought for Hong Kong people could help out, maybe their English is a bit better uh, to do business overseas. Now the other thing is the government. They felt the government should do more to help uh, the Great Bay Area develop. So, uh, make capital, make, make money easier to get. Make mobility easier so people can move around. Trains and services. Uh, but they agreed that the government should not interfere, interfere too much in uh, the development of business. So, that's another thing they felt. Um, they also identified some problems in the mainland. The banking. It's hard to open a bank account, for example, if you're not from mainland China and coming to mainland China from Hong Kong or overseas. Um, other barriers, uh, it might be difficult to rent a house or do some things like that, okay? The government should help out, they think. Okay, another problem, the Hong Kong mindset. What do you think the Hong Kongers think about mainland China? What do you think about Hong Kong? Sometimes people have a kind of mentality. Um, their thinking may not be very open. So they were worried that a lot of people in Hong Kong have a closed mind. Uh, they don't like all these tourists coming in from mainland China and disturbing their peaceful life in Hong Kong. Maybe too many farmers on the MTR or something like this. Um, uh, so, the, the people in the debate felt they should be more open to people from, uh, from mainland China, not so small-minded. Okay, so there must be this, so the resistance and negativity in Hong Kong, they should open up and embrace the change more because everything is changing. And one of the speakers said, don't miss the high-speed train. Uh, this means there's so many opportunities. You know, the, the high-speed trains are not just the, the train, but it symbolizes, it's a symbol of how the whole area is developing. So we have all these 
uh, new high speed trains going everywhere. You know, uh, when I first came to China a long time ago, uh, there were no high speed trains. I remember going with my brother from uh, Shenzhen to Guilin, and was, we had to get on a bus because there was no train for 10 hours. And not only did we get on a bus at night time, um, uh, the toilet didn't work. So there's no toilet in the bus, and the bus didn't stop. So you can imagine. <laughs> and we, we complained, and the, um, the, eventually the bus driver said, okay, 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 and he stopped the bus. But it's on, on the middle of the road in the, in the country area, and there's no light. So my brother, he got off the bus and walked outside to go to the toilet, you know, on the grass. And he fell straight down a big hole, which is like two meters tall. Uh, because the workers had been doing some work at the side of the road. So my brother was straight down the hole and cut all his leg very badly. The blood was everywhere. And so uh, my brother got back on the bus, you know, like this. <laughs> so I was very angry at the, at the bus driver. And, and the bus driver just went. And just drove off. So, uh, but not today. Today you can get on the high speed train, it's much more comfortable, things are better, services are getting better. So, bus drivers uh, are getting better, right? Just like the bus drivers in Bernie Gorm are getting better, right? Maybe not. Okay. Okay, now the main theme. So, I don't want to um, bore you too much with all the facts because you may know all these kind of things already. Okay? So that's pretty much all I'm going to say about what actually happened in the debate. So that's the end. Oh, okay. Maybe one more thing. A few more things. Now what is missing from what I just did? Did I miss something? Do you think that's a good analysis? Did I analyze it well? Do you think? You are, you are honest students. You are deep thinkers. What do you think? Did I do a good job of analyzing the, what happened with the Great Greater Bay Initiative? Mm -hmm. Well, you can think about that. Now, I, this is a very important question that futurists like me sometimes ask. What is missing? Now, you can analyze a problem, but sometimes you have to ask what is missing, not just analyzing what is already here. Because if you don't ask what is missing, then you never see outside of what's actually going on. Okay, now, here's a test for you. This is, this is an IQ test. You're smart people, right? Mm -hmm. So, are you ready for the test? Spot the difference. Now, what is the difference between these two images? Now, here's the first image I already showed it to you before. This is from the South China Morning Post newspaper. And it tells you who is going to be speaking at the, at the talk. Okay, take a note of these fine looking gentlemen. Now this is what I found when I turned up on the day. What is the difference? You are the people at the front. Do you see any difference? Check again, this one. This one. Who can tell me what's the difference? What's that? Yes, there's a lady there, my God, a woman. How dare the woman come up? Right. Isn't that interesting? They didn't put the lady on the original fly, but everybody else got there. What about you girls? Are you angry about that? You should be. You should be interested at least. Um, so, uh, this is something I noticed when I got there. I think nobody else noticed what I did. And maybe that means something. Maybe it means something. Maybe it means something about the way the newspaper thinks who is important and who is not important. Okay. Because the future of the Greater Bay Area should not just be about what men wearing ties and coats uh, do when they come in. Okay, now there are some booklets that they gave us at the, on the day. They look like this. The first booklet which they gave us, a little book, 
Um, it was uh, this one got the Hong Kong Deal High, Macau Bridge, and beyond. And the second one is this one. It's just about the Greater Bay Area. Two companies put out these little booklets, and they gave them to us. And I had to look through these booklets. I found some interesting things that were in the booklets, and I found some things that were not in the booklet. So what's missing in this, do you think? Well, again, this is a question for your intelligence. Okay, so and this is a typical page from the book. They had lots of graphs like this in the booklets. The technology sector will receive a boost from the central government. And it shows that research and development in Shenzhen is very high at around 5% of uh, GDP. And Zhuhai uh, is also pretty high at around about 2.5. Okay. They had other graphs like this, which shows um, leaders by the, the uh, uh, GDP. Okay, that's the gross domestic product. So basically how much money is being turned over in these place, places, okay? And other graphs like this. Residential capital values across the uh, Bay Area. So how much money do you have to pay per meter if you want to buy a house? You might be interested about if you graduate. Hong Kong, this is in Hong Kong dollars, I believe. About 12,000 per square meter. And uh, Jill High is down here about, what, 3,000. So this is the land, basically land prices, uh, well, building prices. So, so that's, the, that's typical of what is in the booklets. So what is missing, do you think? To ask what is missing, you have to ask yourself, what is the thing that they are really interested in here? What are they really, what, is the, what are the areas that they are focusing on? And why aren't they also having graphs or other areas of interest? So this is where you start to analyze what they're doing and what they are not doing, okay? So you're starting to deep, uh, think a little more deeply. Okay, the books, the booklets also had images, pictures in them. So I'm gonna show you some pictures that were in the booklets. Again, have a look at the pictures and ask yourself what is not in the picture. So after I show you these four or five pictures, I want you to turn to the person next to you and ask them, what do you notice is not in the images? Because this is, uh, these are typical images. There weren't very many images, uh, but these are the kinds of images that are in the booklets at the debate. Okay, here's the first one. It's basically a roadway. It's in Hong Kong, by the way. Here's another one. It's a nice, beautiful picture of Hong Kong across the harbor to Jim Sa Joy, okay? Nice picture, huh? Uh, where's this picture, do you think? It's Macau, actually, I believe. I hope so. Um, and it says, in order to fully realize the potential of, of the Great Bay Area, infrastructure, connectivity, cross-border regulatory frameworks, blah, 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 it's talking about money and uh, uh, transportation of goods. Last one. Um, here's another picture, it's also from Hong Kong. And it says, by 2020, there will be 420,000 more mainland tourists to come on and disturb us on the MTR. And we can argue with them all day, right? They like to argue with them. So, there's the uh, four pictures. Now, what are, what's missing? Now, there are not many pictures that are in these booklets. So, this is most of the pictures that are in there. So, what's missing from these pictures? I'm going to give you 30 seconds to turn to your friend and ask them what you notice is not in the pictures. Go. Okay? You talk to your friend. I'm going to ask you in 30 seconds. Anybody? 
We better choose someone from the other front. How about the lady in the young lady in the red hat? Yes. It's very stylish. Did you notice anything like in the picture? I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Good. Uh, this is focused on Hong Kong though, but yeah, Jill Hai is not in the picture. Anything else? Not me. Not you? <laughs> okay, maybe you're just too handsome and they were, they were, they were jealous. Anybody else? Yes? Maybe it's lack of the information of mainland China. Okay, so there's no, no, nothing about mainland China in there also. Very good, okay. So the Macau and, uh, and, and, uh, and Hong Kong. Okay. One other interesting thing is that the, uh, at least the first three pictures, there are no people, right? That's one thing you might notice. Buildings, sky, and roads, and cars. And this one has pictures of people, but you can't see them. They're kind of all blurred out, as if they're running so fast you can't actually uh, see them. So what does, the, what does this mean? Do you think? Does it have any meaning? We, we can think about that, okay. Maybe it's telling us something about the mindset of the people who uh, create the booklet and the kind of people that are at the debate. Okay, so I'm now going to move on to uh, what is future studies. Now I'm uh, a futurist and there are quite a few other futurists around uh, the greater China area. Mostly, most of them are in, actually to be honest, most of them are in Taiwan and, uh, and uh, South Korea and a few in Thailand. Not so many in the mainland. But what do we do? So basically future studies is the formal study of the future. Um, we also look at how it unfolds or develops. Okay? And a very important part is how to shape it, how do we make it, how do we make it better. Um, okay, I'm not going to go too much into this. Uh, you can look at the PowerPoint if you want to. But basically, there's, a, there's a, a formal group of futurists that have an organization. There are several organizations. And you can join them and go around and speak and do conferences. And these people try to think deeply about the future and how we are making our society. But here's some useful futures concepts. And uh, while I'm mentioning these, I'm also going to ask you a question in a moment, so pay attention. Okay, basically I'm going to tell you about four futures concepts. These are, these are important ideas in future studies. So the first idea is that there are many possible futures. Now you may think, well, everybody knows that, but not all societies think like that. Some societies think that the future is set, um, maybe by a god or it's just fate, you can't change it. But most futurists think that there are, there's more than one future.